I'm Joe Polish. I'm Dan Sullivan. And welcome to 10 Times Talk. Hello, it's Joe Polish and... Dan Sullivan here. Yes. So, uh, yeah, we're back. 10 Times Talk. Yeah. What, what, what do you got going? Well, uh, one of the things, you know, I've been thinking a lot lately, Joe, about the one of the, the, the incredible impacts that you've made on my thinking since I've known you when you first came into Strategic Coach. It's on the whole impact of marketing. And, uh, you know, when I, when I th- even hear the word marketing, your face flashes in my mind because you, you are probably the individual that I know, and I doubt if I'll ever come across anyone who surpasses you, is really that you have the most comprehensive understanding and knowledge of um, marketing and all the different sources of marketing that I've spent a great deal of time with. I mean, I think Dean Jackson is certainly in this category, but, uh, you know, I've spent far, far more time with you than I have with Dean. So, uh, and it's it's really, really, um, uh, first of all, I'll say the impact that you've made on me, and then I'd like you to talk about this, and it's the distinction between marketing and selling, because um, the vast majority of entrepreneurs lump these two terms in together, but what's really true is that the vast majority of entrepreneurs have spent all their life selling, but they've never done any marketing. And uh, so um, the first question I'd I'd like you to do, uh, first question I have for you is just define according to you, uh, what marketing is in relationship to selling. Yeah, okay, well, I'll just quickly give a definition, then I'll kind of expand on it. Uh, selling is uh, what I always say. This is kind of like my canned answer if someone like asked me, you know, what, what is the difference? Uh, selling is what you do when you're on the phone or face-to-face with somebody, and marketing is what you do to get someone on the phone or face-to-face with you or you know, if you have employees that are salespeople, your team, uh, that are, you know, so let me say that again. Selling is what you do when you're on the phone or face-to-face with somebody. Marketing is what you do to get someone on the phone or face-to-face with you so they're properly positioned, so they're pre-interested, pre-motivated, pre-qualified, and predisposed to do business with you or give you money or support your cause, you know, whatever your motivation is. And it's positioning. I mean, the the greatest way to sum up the difference is is positioning uh, robotically in large mass versus one on one. Because selling, even if you're really skilled at it, and and what is always surprising to me, Dan, is um, a lot of people that are just fantastic salespeople. You know, there's a few that are. You know, you hear the term "born salesperson." You know, they're they're just persuasive. They know how to get what it is they want. Uh, they're really good at being charming, um, and, and these could be introverted individuals too. That could be incredibly effective, you know, in a one-on-one situation or over the phone. You know, it, it doesn't have anything to do per se with always being a, a flamboyant individual or a, a great talker. I mean, there are some people that stutter and stumble through their words, and you know, are slow that are still incredibly effective at selling one-on-one. And there are many people that will spend years, you know, honing that particular skill, and I'll run across people that um, don't spend any time honing the skill of marketing, which is the ultimate leverage. It's like how to how to actually leverage the ability to sell, because with marketing, uh, in many cases, selling becomes much easier, and in some cases, ideally unnecessary, because if everyone you're talking to is pre-interested, pre-motivated, pre-qualified, and predisposed to do business with you because you did your marketing right then you're actually selling in advance. That's why if someone watches a video of you explaining something, you know, and the video was, say, up on YouTube, and then they contacted you or they contacted your company, and the video did a great job of sifting, sorting, and screening people that were a right fit or interested versus not interested, attracting, you know, the type of person they were looking for, repelling the type of person they weren't looking for, and by the time they actually contact you, they had 30 minutes of consumption about you, your product, your service, the problem, the challenge, the opportunity, you know, whatever the deal was, so that by the time you're actually talking to that prospect, they're no longer a, you know, a skeptic, they're no longer a a suspect, they're a prospect, and in many cases they're a warm prospect, and in many cases they're simply ready to, you know, sign up, 
And in some cases, if you do your marketing right, you know, people call you up and say, hey, you know, can I give you money? And that's exactly what you want. I mean, you want people that are so well positioned that you don't have to do a sales job on them. Because selling in many cases just means you haven't done any marketing in advance, so you have to, you know, spend a lot of time, you know, taking someone from the annoying pest stage to the welcome guest stage, which is a term that, you know, came from my friend Dan Kennedy. But basically, um, yeah, that's what that's what marketing is. And so marketing is the quickest path to the sale. And this is counterintuitive because sometimes the path to the sale could be days, weeks, or months. Mm-hmm. You know, cause, but it is still the quickest path to the sale um, because sometimes you have to take people through, you know, just like you, know, you harvest, <laughs> you're, you're taking them through a process. Mm-hmm. Selling is rarely an event, it, it, it's, it's a process. So that's how I would, uh, that's how I would define it. Yeah, and the really interesting thing is that I've noticed kind of a crisis that has increased more and more over the last 20 years in the selling world, uh, precisely because the kind of attention span that people used to have available to them they, you know, they, you'd phone someone and there was a good chance that you would get them on the phone or you'd send them a letter and there was a good chance that they would read the letter, uh, you know, uh, and you would have direct contact with them right away that that kind of attention span and the availability of someone who would be a prospect to write you a check has actually declined, I would say, dramatically over the last 20 years. And therefore, the robotic quality that you referred to, that there are things that are happening all the time that are educating other people, predisposing them, uh, and preparing them is done without any time input on your part once it all once it is all set up. Yeah, I mean, even looking at what you do in Strategic Coach, because what, what is really great about Strategic Coach is when people come into Strategic Coach, I mean, you, you, you teach them a lot of things, and, and a lot of times you just teach them how to teach themselves things by how to think better. I mean, one of your quotes is, the problem is never the problem. The problem is that you don't know how to think about the problem. And, you know, people come into Strategic Coach and they're like, okay, you know, they, they kind of look at what they're doing, how they're doing it, and, and you're, you're, you're really superb at showing people how to uniquely package what it is they do and how they do it. And, you know, to kind of part the curtain, if people look around, you know, you take 10 times talk that we're doing right now. Anyone that's out there that is a high-level entrepreneur that has hit a ceiling of complexity, that is interested in growing their company 10 times, they're listening to you talk about some of your philosophies, some of the things. They're, they're hearing me, a client, talking about how awesome Strategic Coach is, and they're consuming, you know, in this particular episode, 30 minutes of us talking mm-hmm. about stuff. And Strategic Coach is one of those places where they can go to become a better entrepreneur and reach a 10 times goal. Well, that makes the whole process of them talking to someone at Strategic Coach because you have salespeople just like I have salespeople. You know, they get on the phone, they answer questions, they talk to people, they help, you know, explain what's in it for them. But at the same time, if people want to read any of your books, you know, you've got books out there. If they watch videos that are out there from you, if they hear other Strategic Coach clients, you know, talking about Strategic Coach, you have a whole slew of knowledge products and all of those things help sell people in advance because they're actually utilizing some of that in the same way that it'll cause, you know, 10 times talk is a great education-based marketing process for sifting, sorting, and screening ideal people for the 25K group and for Strategic Coach. And so in a lot of ways, we're providing, you know, content for people for free just to learn, just to hear stuff. And a lot of people will be like, wow, you know, if, if we're getting this much value from them for free, I can't imagine how valuable we would get something if we actually paid for it. And it makes the whole process, it just enhances the whole sales process. And and also, there's a lot of people that will listen to 10 times talk that just aren't ready for strategic coach. They're not ready for 25K. But hopefully along the way, they'll hear good stuff. They'll have, you know, great feelings about, you know, Joe Polish and Dan Sullivan because we're providing value and guidance to them so they can become better entrepreneurs. And maybe they're going to talk to someone that's a real successful entrepreneur and say, hey, you ever heard of this program called Strategic Coach? I mean, the, the funny thing, Dan, the way I joined Strategic Coach is that I actually heard 
about strategic coach years ago from a guy named Terry Hunnefield, who had never actually been in the program, and he'd heard about it from Joe Stump, who was a coach to the real estate industry who attended strategic coach. You know, and this has gone back 15 years ago. And, you know, he, he had told Terry about it. Terry told me about it. And I was like, so what did I do? It, it just was the right message for me to hear. And I ended up calling up Strategic Coach. And I signed up and then got Terry to actually sign up, who is the one that actually told me about it, who had never even attended it. But, you know, part of that is you had knowledge products and CDs and all these things that were sent to me in advance. So it wasn't a real tough sales job for your salesperson. Um, you know, in order to enroll me because I, there was all this material that was sent to me in advance that allowed me to learn about it without having to sit down and have someone start from scratch explaining what the strategic coach program was all about. Joe, kind of along those lines, you know, I know your history and, you know, uh, how you got started in business, but I think it would be very useful for our listeners to uh, sort of mark the date or the point uh, in your life where up until that point you were a good salesperson in, in, if you could get in front of them, but um, you had no marketing capabilities. And then what was it that actually um, put you on this path, which has really been a lifetime path for you, of uh, just being this encyclopedic uh, explorer of the entire marketing world? Could can, can you just give a little bit of life history here? Because I think everybody is fascinated with how entrepreneurs suddenly discover something that they need. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Before I, before I do that, Dan, let me actually mention, because on the last uh, 10 times talk, I, I, I said I would ask you about your only 20 new habits away from doubling your income. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so what I'm going to do, because I'll we'll maybe talk about the end and we'll expand that onto another episode, but what I'm about to to share in terms of just going into my story. I'll do it in a way to some of the habits that I actually developed that, that really did allow me uh, to more than, than double my income. So it, it all started in how I got on this path of marketing when I was a uh, carpet cleaner. And I had gotten into the carpet cleaning business from a friend who recommended I go into it with him. And we started out with a, as a partnership, but I that partnership lasted about two and a half months because my partner was incredibly misguided, uh, didn't know what he was doing, and, and a little excessive in his partying, and that, that's the uh, the censored version of it. I mean, it was, it was uh, not, not a good partnership. A uh, great guy, but just not, you know, not a good business partnership. And so basically, I was stuck with uh, chemicals and equipment and no money because I'd invested all my money in starting this carpet cleaning uh, business and buying, you know, chemicals and equipment and getting business cards that said professional which I was professional at delivering the service, but I certainly wasn't professional knowing how to actually build and run a business and make any money. And so I could get in front of people with price advertising. You know, we would have two rooms and a hall for thirty nine ninety five, to doing telemarketing, going out to restaurants and handing out business cards. I mean, you're talking cold, cold call selling. And if there's anyone that's listening to this, and I'll mention this whenever I talk about carpet cleaning, it's like, well, you know, I'm in financial services. I'm in you know, high-tech internet businesses, what's that got to do with me? And, and I always tell people, well, you know, if, if I had to figure out how to effectively sell uh, in markets something that nobody wants to buy uh, and learn methodologies, uh, it certainly is applicable to whatever your business you're in. If you're in any sort of industry that's sexier than carpet and upholstery cleaning, you certainly can derive some, uh, you know, some uh, best practices and, and techniques and strategies based on what I did in that industry. And so I, you know, I would get in front of people and, you know, I was, you know, to a certain degree charming and I cared about them and I educated them and I offered, you know, a really good price starting out very low because that's the only offer that I knew how to make. And although I spent uh, in many days all day long working, I was commoditized because I would, one of the things that literally kept me uh, in business for the first, you know, year was I would get these apartment complexes and this is me in my you know early 20s doing hard manual labor, uh, cleaning carpets, and uh, myself. And you know I, I would be lugging a portable steam cleaner up three-story apartments in you know the middle of summer in Arizona, and I was allergic to cats. And I always remember sometimes I'd be, you know, it's like cleaning carpets in a sauna, and while you're wheezing and having the equivalent of an asthma attack because you're, you know I was allergic to cats, so it was a pretty miserable sort of thing. And I would, you know, but I would sell people on, oh, let me do it. But the problem was, I would be selling myself into 
accounts and work that wasn't even profitable because I was going broke. I literally was spending money on credit cards to stay in business. And the joke that I made was, well, you know, if, if you want to go broke, um, go broke being lazy, sitting on the couch watching TV. Don't go broke doing hard manual labor, working your ass off. That's the dumbest way in the world to go broke. And so that's what I was doing. Wow, I was still a good salesperson because I could sell those jobs. But the big discovery came, and when a friend gave me a issue of a newsletter called uh, the Gary Halbert Letter, written by uh, this really insane marketing guy who later became a real dear friend of mine named Gary Halbert, and Gary passed away um, a few years ago. Uh, he was a genius, though, and I started reading this newsletter. And one of the things that dawned on me was the difference between institutional or image advertising and direct response. And image or institutional advertising is typically what uh, back then and, and even today is taught in most business schools, which is brand building, name recognition, get your name out there, establish a brand, establish credibility, that sort of stuff. And it's uh, usually the type of mass media marketing you see from banks or insurance companies and things along those lines, big, you know, big companies who you are, what they do, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, Whereas direct response is designed to not only get your name out there, but get a response back, make specific offers, speak in a language that sifts, sorts, and screens people, create a sense of urgency, that sort of stuff, and, and make a specific offer. And the way that Gary would explain it is can and clone yourself. He would say, you know, the, you, the, the problem with being an effective salesperson is you're still limited to how many people you can talk to. But with the right ad, the right sales letter, you can speak to, you know, 10 people, 50 people, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and in some cases, millions of people with the right ad. And you can leverage that through, you know, sales letters and through, you know, video and radio and that sort of thing. And so my first big insight was can and clone yourself. You know, how do I go out and say something um, to people without physically being there? And so I hired a copywriter to, you know, which I thought was all the money in the world at the time, but I paid a copywriter in 1992 to write my first consumer's guide to carpet cleaning. And from that moment forward, that started a whole shift that changed my life. I mean, that, you know, has generated literally hundreds of millions of dollars uh, in revenue for many of my clients, for different cleaners, took me, you know, I mean, like so many things have, have come out of it, but it took me from taking all of the things that I used to say one-on-one, putting it in print into a format that was far different than a brochure, because, you know, brochures at the time, and I'm speaking, you know, in a language that there was no internet back then. So it was paper and ink, TV, radio, advertisements. I mean, that's how you generate a business. There was no internet. There was no Google. There was none of that. So how did I communicate, you know, through print advertising and that sort of thing? And it literally created a system where I could talk to many people without physically being there. And I took that consumer awareness guide, which basically taught people how to choose a professional cleaner, and I turned it into a 24-hour free recorded message. And now I had a free recorded message when someone could call and listen to a 10-minute recording on how to choose a carpet cleaner. And by the time they listened to that, I didn't have to sell them. They would call up and say, not how much do you charge. They would call and say, when can you do the job? Because the free recorded message, the consumer awareness guide, set people up so that they were positioned so they're pre-interested, pre-motivated, pre-qualified, and predisposed to do business with my company. And now today... That's what we teach many, many people how to do, and that is a huge habit of getting in the habit of quit trying to be the world's greatest salesperson. Instead, you can be a mediocre salesperson or a terrible salesperson, but if you have the right marketing in place, you can sell a tremendous amount of stuff robotically. Yeah, I mean, it's so amazing because, you know, we've been very successful because we've been... uh you know, at Coach, we um, even today, 90 to 95% of uh, individuals who come to Strategic Coach actually do it pretty much the route that you followed, Joe, that uh, they just heard somebody that they respected um, say something. And um, But we realized that, uh, you know, the way I put it to my team about two years ago, I said that stage one of Strategic Coach uh, you know, we were selling to our uh, selling to fr- to our friends. 
and our friends were selling to their friends. But uh, stage two, we're going to continue to do that, but we're going to add that we're going to be talking to, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and millions of strangers, too, because we know exactly who we want to be in the program, and just using the insights uh, that you put in your consumer guide, we can uh, we we can provide free knowledge and we can ask great questions, which would interest only the kind of people that we're actually looking uh, for, such that they, that they would respond because we've sent out the right uh, radio signal to the right person. And I think that yesterday I was doing a workshop and. Um, I said, you know, probably up until now, your entire career, as you've been selling other people so that they could find out about your ideas. And I says, why don't you change it now so that in the future, your ideas are out um, selling so that people can find out about you. And, uh, you know, it's just a switch that I can have my ideas out there working 24-7, 365 days a year and require none of my presence, and I can hit millions of people with my ideas, and there's almost no cost to it with the Internet being what it is. You will see, that's that's the greatest advantage, because, I mean, one of the things I tell people, like, you know, you look back at the 70s and stuff, if someone was going to run a space ad in a newspaper or a magazine, they're, you know, using whiteout and exacto knives in order to lay out camera-ready artwork. And, you know, today people bitch and complain because, you know, they uh, how hard it is to do marketing and how hard it is to get messaging out there. And it's like, man, you don't realize how easy technology has made it, how cheap technology has made it. You know, uh, you, you can shoot a video off, you know, most smartphones that you can have uploaded onto the internet literally within seconds of uh, a, a videotaping it. I mean, you can live stream from your, your, your phone if you want to on video. I mean, to do that sort of thing a decade ago would have cost you a bloody fortune. And in most cases, you can't even, you couldn't have done it even if you had spent a million dollars. And so, you know, the greatest thing with technology is that just allows you to can and clone yourself on video, in print, on audio. I mean, even what we're doing right now. I mean, you know, we're going to have a 30-minute conversation. It's going to go up there. Thousands of people are going to hear it. And, you know, in this particular case, we're really, you know, we're not hard-selling anybody. There's no trick here. We're not holding anything back to say, oh, in order to get the good stuff, you got to pay us. No, we're just uh, delivering, you know, incredibly useful value to certain types of individuals that will find this incredibly useful and, and, and other people won't. And what we're doing even right now is education-based marketing. Mm -hmm. And one of the greatest ways to, uh, you know, position your prospects so they're pre-interested, pre-motivated, pre-qualified, and predisposed to do business with you is to educate them. Just teach them um, useful, valuable things and at the same time, you know, make an offer on how you do it. And what you're doing with Strategic Coach in this current phase, Dan, you know, you've got advertising that is starting. You've got campaigns uh, done in ways that have never been uh, done before. And it's, uh, you know, it, all it does is build on all of these things that you've learned uh, over the years. And a lot of times people will get all frustrated because they're like, oh, man, if I would have, you know, only known this 10 years ago. Well, yeah, you know, of course. You know, if we would have only known the, you know, the, 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 the secret, uh, you know, passcode 10 years ago, but we didn't. So here we are right now. Mm -hmm. And as you are so good at, at framing for entrepreneurs is, you know, that was uh, phase one and let's go to phase two. You know, now you're going to a 2.0 of your company and everything you've done in the past is all the R&D. And now it's a matter of putting all of that into um, doing marketing because, you know, the greatest products and services in the world are useless without customers and clients, and marketing is the ultimate leverage. Yeah, and uh, putting it back into the 10 times talk context is that this would be one of the major platforms, you know, if we were, you know, keeping track of major platforms of the 10 times talk that we're doing here, Joe, marketing, you, you, will, not do ten, you will not do 10 times in your business unless you become a master marketer. You know, I, I, you know, and I'm a convert to this because I've always been a great salesperson and, you know, I'm 68 and I, I you know, I had a conversion when I'm, you know, when I was around 65 that, oh, geez, you know, now I'm ready for the big show, you know, which is right. <laughs> the marketing show. So here I am three years, you know, into an entirely new 
capability, and I, I feel like I've started life over. I feel like I'm right at the beginning uh, in terms of a learning curve, and it's but it's it's got such extraordinary multipliers attached to it that was never possible uh, the way we were approaching it before. So I, I mean, this is just. You know, it's just extraordinarily exciting stuff because the technologies to support you on this are just, you know, they're doubling their capabilities. You know, every year there's new means, there's new methods, there's new, uh, they're, they're, it's just a marvelous world we're living in. If you're an entrepreneur who's talented, ambitious, successful, and just has a vision of yourself in the future that you're going to be doing 10 times uh, greater in the things that really matter in your business. Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. And, and you know, the, the cool thing about what you just said, too, is that uh, you already had established yourself as the highest level coach for successful entrepreneurs in the world. You know, I mean, there's no coaching program like Strategic Coach that has had the amount of truly successful by income. Uh, entrepreneurs uh, on the planet. You spent more time coaching successful entrepreneurs than anyone else in the world. I mean, you're already the top guy at your game, and you already had established a very successful multi-million dollar business for many, many years. And the greatest thing about 10 times is now you're saying, okay, I've already had this great achievement. I mean, you, you are already the... See, the, the, the lesson here, I think, for our listeners is you can be the best in the world and still be better. I mean, you even wrote, you know, a course with CDs and a book, a knowledge product called, you know, how the best get better. And the people that will really resonate with this conversation are people that are the best and they want to get better or they haven't got they haven't gotten to the best, but they, that's where they're headed and they want to get better. And it's a mindset just like 10 times is it first starts with the mindset and then putting the, the, the multipliers and putting the methodologies in, in, like you said, with marketing. I don't know anyone that's become super successful without marketing. I mean, people look at Apple. And, I mean, you know, what did Steve Jobs do uh, with his keynote presentations? They were education-based marketing presentations where he would get up and he would talk about how cool the products are, but what they do and how they do it. And he would explain them in ways on how you can utilize them in your life. And he would take what most of his competitors did was take, you know, computer related technologies that were very complex and they would just make them, you know, more complex in many cases where Steve Jobs just got up there and he just made things seem so simple and so easy and so exciting. And he would engage people and people would watch that. And the Apple stores, you know, today are, uh, you know, one of the most profitable, uh, you know, retail spaces in the world. And, uh, you know, it's all about even, you know, I love going to Apple stores because the whole thing is built around, you know, uh, effective marketing, and you know it's it's just, it's just hysterical. Me in, in 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 terms of doubling the business, because one of the things I want to ask you when I'm done rambling here is about your quote: "You're only uh, 20 new habits away from doubling your income." Well, when I first put uh, direct response marketing into place in my carpet cleaning company, I was averaging $2,100 a month in sales <laughs> over a two-year period. And within six months, and this is in 1992, by the way, okay, so money's worth a lot more now than it is then, and I'm, I'm now running a multi-million dollar you know, organization. But basically back then, I went from 2100 a month, you know, I couldn't even survive on that without living on credit cards, to over $12,300 in six months, I, I literally five times the revenue of my small carpet cleaning company just by changing the message on my ads. Mm -hmm. I didn't become a better carpet cleaner. I wasn't a better manager. You know, I wasn't more, you know, concerned or, you know, I mean, I was already a nice guy. I already cared about my clients. Uh, what I did was I changed the message. And I always love to say the difference between a $1 bill and a $100 bill is the message on the paper. And if you can improve the message, you can improve the, 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 the value by 100 mm -hmm. times if you look at a dollar bill. So if you can make your website messaging you know, twice as good, if you can make your business cards, if you can make your signage, if you can make your social media communications, your audio, your video, your TV, your radio, if you can just improve that message, if you can literally have a really awesome sales letter, that could not only double your business, it could... 10 times your business and you're not going to 10 times your business if you don't look at that as one of the most important things that you could um, you know get skilled in mm -hmm. yeah well i'm i'm a total convert you know and um 
You know, I mean, it's it's uh, it's been very just extraordinarily refreshing and thrilling for me to enter this whole new world. I mean, I I know a lot, and you know, I've got I got a lot of stuff that can now be multiplied. But just back to the twenty habits, Joe. You know, a lot of people say, "Well, what are the twenty habits?" You know, like I've got a manual or a kit, and I says, "Well, it's kind of interesting." Uh, uh, you you can actually write the manual for yourself in relationship to you know the thing that we've been talking about before that if you take a part the most exciting part of your business and you draw a circle around it and that means that everything that's outside of the circle is the non really exciting part of your business and you uh, then say I'm just going to take the exciting part of my business in the circle and I'm going to take that ten times. And then I'm going to change everything that's, so that I can spend all my time doing that. There's a whole bunch of obstacles, present obstacles, that are going to come up. And every one of those obstacles you can flip. It's almost like martial arts that, you know, in the martial arts uh, from the Orient, there's, you know, there's five or six or seven different martial arts. But one of the key principles is that you always use the opposition uh, as uh, to take the strength of the opposition and actually flip it to your advantage. And uh, when you have a really powerful goal, the barriers and the limitations and the deficiencies in your present situation will suddenly make themselves known to you and say, well, you can't do that because of this and this and this. If you just take the top 20 things over a period of time and flip them so that they become the pathway to achieving that 10 times goal, which means that you're adding, you're, you're increasing the amount of time that you're spending on the exciting thing and you're decreasing the amount of time that you're spending on the non-exciting non time, habits will form. And there will be 20 of them that the moment that you, um, you know, that you put them in place and you just stick with them, they'll actually automatically take you. You know, I mean, we talked about in the, in the, the quote that you did was you're only 20 habits away from doubling your income, and I, I've now upgraded that. I think it's 20 habits away from taking your income in a particular part of your company by 10 times. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And so, yeah, those th those are our thoughts. We can even expand on this in a future episode. And yeah. what, what I would love to have all of our uh, listeners do is give us uh, their comments on what they think about this at 10timestalk.com. And uh, if you know anyone that uh, is a successful entrepreneur, an industry transformer, someone that really is you know, creating tremendous value in the world and they're not leveraging themselves as best they could, then share with them 10 times talk uh, because we put this out there to help uh, value-creating entrepreneurs uh, get better and grow their companies uh, 10 times. And so the recommendation that I would have for everyone this week is that think about one particular area of your business, some value creation that really doesn't have the proper uh, messaging. It, you're not communicating effectively to the marketplace in print or online through you know your advertising, your marketing, your website, or your team. Uh, just how awesome what it is you're, you have, your process, your product, your service, what it is and look at what is a headline and what is some copy that you need to say, that you need to communicate, and then sit down and write it down or record it on audio or have someone you know put a video in front of you and it doesn't need to be high tech and just talk. Speak as if you just had to communicate robotically, like you were going to go away for 10 years and you know there needed to be some message that was said in order for your company and organization to carry on the selling of this process, this product, this service, and you had to say it in a way that would just be compelling and would be persuasive. And just capture that. Capture yourself at concert pitch and put it into place. That's what marketing is, and we'll continue to expand upon this and many other best practices at 10timestalk.com. And uh, any, any final last words from you, Dan? No, I mean, it's very exciting. And, uh, you know, I've, uh, even in the time that we've, been launched on this project, Joe. I just noticed my my thinking speeding up because uh, you know there's uh, so much from my last forty years of coaching that I think that can come into play here. So I'm just uh, looking forward to the next uh, into our next uh, interview. Absolutely, thank you so much, and to all our listeners, see you next time. <laughs> 